Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Pass Money. I'm Kirby. That's Alex over there. Um, we see it in the headlines more frequently, more often. Possible recession. We're starting to see um, unemployment numbers tick up a little bit. Um, we're starting to see layoffs in big tech. Um, I said it uh, uh, maybe six months ago that it'll be more white collar jobs that get lost in this recession than blue collar jobs. So I talked about how this is nothing like 08 financial crisis that's coming upon us in the residential, the residential one to four unit. Um, it's not going to be anything like the financial crisis of 08 where people are losing their houses left and right. Will people lose their house? Yeah, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, we've talked about how this crisis, especially going on with the banks and stuff like that, is nothing like 08 financial crisis. It's more like the 1980s savings and loans crisis. Um, but in today's video, we're going to talk about if we get that um, inevitable recession. Because if people don't know, we usually, you know, six to eight year cycles, we get a recession. So just so you understand that. So when the inevitable recession comes, what's the game plan? that I'll shoot for. So with this, we'll just play this little exercise. We're going to act like the recession starts tomorrow. We're going to pretend the recession starts tomorrow. And Alex, so Alex, what would you do if the recession started tomorrow? What would be your game plan? I don't think I would change much um, because the way my wife and I manage our finances is like we're always preparing for I would say we're always prepared in a sense um, and we prepared beforehand. So, you know, our objective right now, or at least the goal that we have focused on is building uh, our passive income. And I know we talked about this before and it, and it's that focus of just passive. So it's, um, you know, for this whole time we've been investing in uh, now in real estate, and now it's building dividend stocks um, positions in that. Uh, my wife sells health insurance. So it's it's aside from like trading stocks, uh, like actively trading, but with options and stuff. Um, but not to confuse everyone. It's just so it's building our cash flow so that we can sustain an event like that if we were to lose our job, because that's that's always in my mind and it's not like a fear it's just an awareness knowing that at any given moment a company will let you go whether you've been there for five years 15 30 years you know you're an expense to the company and so it's always preparing beforehand um so our goal has always just been build capital to invest it so it brings us more income so that we're less dependent on our active income and so uh setting us up in a position where you know we won't be as strained if there is a recession if jobs are like you know if we're let go from our jobs so and as we always talk about i'm already super cheap so, so i mean it's not like i have to adjust my lifestyle because there's not much going on guys so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, he still ain't put cheese on his bologna sandwiches yet, so <laughs> we ain't got to worry about Alex. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, yeah. uh, you know, we've talked about this before, is it's just preparing beforehand. There's not much you can do, I don't think, when the recession actually hits, other than, I guess, become more uh, cautious with your money. But if you're already doing that on a daily basis, then you're already accustomed to living that way. And so my wife and I, we still understand that the objective is we still are not at the point where we have that extra cushion from our passive or our passive income or our, our income outside of our job. So the income we do have can probably sustain us and it can assist us in getting by, but it's not at the point where we're making three, four, five X what we make at work. So it's not like, uh, you know, we're at the point where it's like, oh, we just don't even need the job. It's, you know, we still have to be careful. So until we get to that point, 
we're constantly preparing for um, if there is a recession per se. Right. So for you and your for you and your wife, one of y'all lost your job, and I'm not saying. I mean, of course, just losing the job that's the major extreme. But of course, if you lose your job, you go out and look for another one, look for another one. But if if let's just say, for instance, let's say you lost your job with what you got going on now and just your wife's income, could y'all still survive living day to day like that? Yes. Yeah. If one of us lost their job, yeah. Yeah. And so that's the thing that I wanted to point out is most people, even if they're married, they combined in a union, uh, they live and they need both people to work to maintain that lifestyle. One thing, so let's just say a recession started tomorrow in my case. Let's say a recession started tomorrow. We've been hearing news about a recession for at least six months. If anybody was paying attention, if if, if people got off the Netflix, stopped listening to the uh, you know clickbait media about you know Russia, Ukraine, this judge, that this ex president, that this governor doing that, you know Hunter Biden, all all that other stuff, all the stuff that don't matter to your day to day life. If people was paying attention to the recession talks, recession fears, listening how, you know, when the federal government and the um the federal government and the treasury, they pumped all this money into the system that it caused inflation. If you was paying attention to that and then hearing how much inflation was going up, the with inflation, recession usually follow, especially when it's hyperinflation. The only thing you got to do is study history and see that. People have ample time to prepare. Are we technically in a recession now? No, not technically. But you still have all that time that six months before now and up until the recession to prepare. And as you said, if the recession started tomorrow, most people don't think they're going to have to do because they didn't prepare. They're just going to be praying and hoping. But now is a good time to start. So if a recession started for me, it would be simply because I was paying attention to the news beforehand. Make sure you have a control of your expenses. Make sure you building that life reserve and just stacking, stacking cash. But like you, Alex, that's how I live every day, every day life. Again, recessions come in, you know, six to eight year cycles. So recession, now recession, recession. So I always prepare like a recession's coming. But and but the thing is, is I always have cash stacked, I'm not saying, oh man, recession, I got money hiding up under my mattress. No, I always stacking cash anyway because I'm looking for another deal anyway. Now with just a pivot of if a recession happens and let's say 85% of my properties go unrented or something like that, my business is closed down, then I have that cash sitting there to buffer the blow. But the cash is there, you know, to do the next deal. But if a recession comes and I can't use it for the next deal, then that's what it'll be. It'll be that life reserver we have. Now, as far as the investment front, as far as the investment front, what, what I'll do, and again, like you, before I get to the investment front, it will always be, if I'm in a house with somebody, married, whatever, if I'm in a house with somebody, we will never live on both of our income. Never. We will be a. My goal would always be to live on half of one person's income, <laughs> and everything else is extra. And there's many ways to do that. And of course, you can't start off like that, saying, "Oh well, hey, you make five thousand or two thousand a month. I make two thousand a month. Let's live on a thousand dollars a month." But you can slowly, gradually get there. You know, everybody was talking about cord cutting. We know with cable, cable, TV, and the internet. They talked about cord cutting. And then they said, oh, we're going to cord cut those big cable bills, two, three hundred dollar cable bills for something simple like Netflix. You know, ten dollars, twelve dollars a month. But these people who cut the cable bill to save the three hundred dollars a month, they got Netflix, Hulu, Disney, 
Amazon, Mom and Them TV, HBO Max. They got everything. So they didn't put the $300 back on, back on the bill just with subscription services. What's the point of that? You know, oh, then you got YouTube TV also. So they didn't re they didn't reaccumulate those bills, but you can cut off those bills and cut those expenses out. And then you slowly, slowly, of course, the dreaded word, writing a budget, and then slowly cut the things out that you don't need so you can start piling money to the side. Now, going to investments, going to investments, I'm out here hunting like a shark looking for deals. I'm hunting like a shark looking for deals. Um, I mean, as you know, our income, I mean, our expenses is about 20% of our income. So I'm just, I just got cash sitting there. If I'm not doing a deal, I'm looking for a deal. I'm looking for depressed stocks. I'm looking for stocks that's out of sync. I'm looking for real estate. I don't care if it's commercial, you know, you know, more than five units. Uh, if it's industrial, I don't care. Residential, one to four units, wherever the deal is at, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm be having my eyes out there for those people that's in distressed situations that need you know, that life reserver to get them out of the situation that they're in. And that is the goal for me going into a recession is finding opportunities because the most money, the most money you can make, the wealth is created in a recession. The wealth is not created in a cryptocurrency bull market. The wealth is created when cryptocurrency for the last six months been sitting down there at 14,000, nobody was paying for it. That's when it should be accumulated, not when it's up here at 30,000 a day. When the move, the the money making or the wealth creation part was buying the cryptocurrency when nobody was paying for it at fifteen, at fourteen thousand. Now it's at thirty thousand. It just went up one hundred percent. But it was created when you bought it down here, not when you buy it at thirty, hoping it will go higher. So that that's how I will take that, and then I will just keep living my life the same way. I mean, will we draw back on a couple of things if the recession gets deeper than expected? Yeah, we might. We, we might not go out. Well, I know we might. We won't go out as much uh, as we do as far as eating. Um, I probably won't make it down there to Alex's ramen noodle and cheese sandwiches. I probably won't get down there. I just, I probably won't. I probably won't. But it will be less. It will be less than, uh, it will be less than what we used to doing. But it is not a, it won't be all of the fears, but you have to think about it. If, if you're feeling a recession, or where I'm at in my stage of life or where Alex had in his stage of life, if they feel in the recession, this thing, probably the tenants are feeling some impact. So unfortunately, that we'll have to deal with tenants not paying. Eventually, tenants getting evicted. All that stuff costs money. Rehabbing properties, turning over properties. And I'm not as cutthroat as many people are. If tenants are struggling because we're in a you know economic space, then I understand that. Um, just like with the commercial property I have in Texas, when COVID happened, I could have been a savage and told them, hey, all y'all still got to pay rent. I don't give a damn about COVID. But having the ability to say, uh, telling the business owners, you don't have to worry about the rent at all. We'll get through it. But the only way I could do that is set myself up financially beforehand to be able to absorb that blow. And but so I'll I'll help them out. But the inevitable truth is it will be tenants that take advantage. Uh, it will be situations where I can't help them, where evictions will happen, turnovers will happen. And I have to be prepared for all of that uh, that goes into that space of being having a real estate business and a real estate company. That's just the nature of the beast. I understand that. So that's why we'll draw back on a few things just to make sure we have extra upon extra to deal with all the craziness that's going on that might go on there. Um, most of my rentals are in blue collar, blue collar areas. Most of the tenants have blue collar jobs and not many white collar jobs. And I do believe that this is a, a white collar recession is coming on. And I'm not saying that so I can convince myself that my tenants won't get evicted or not pay. It's just that's what I truly believe that it will be more in the white collar space because in the blue collar space, they still need uh, functioning people that's out there doing the work and people that sit behind the keyboard and stuff like that is not uh, with automation AI. They're just not needed no more. I've seen it uh, in many businesses where AI and outsourcing of jobs have depleted the workforce 
in the white collar space dramatically, even before it became, you know, headline news about Google, Amazon, and things like that. So that's how I prepare. Just setting up different avenues and stages to make sure I'm able to cushion the blow and move forward and take advantage of distressed situations, no matter if it's in the stock market, business, real estate, or anything like that. Yeah, I think, you know, probably the biggest one for like a working class family to do to prepare is uh, build capital, have capital save, you know, have a savings account, a rainy day fund. Uh, that's the most hyped up one. But one of the biggest ones, too, that's hard to project on a family that is accustomed to having a high income lifestyle is living on, like you said, half of one's income. And it's easy for my wife and I to do that because we did that from the start. We didn't live a lifestyle of living at the max of our income and then had to bring it down to now we live on one income. We've always lived on just one. So it's like any inch further we get of being able to say, spend more on groceries or spend more on going out. It's like, it's more exciting to do that because we didn't go from a high to a low and then now gradually bring it back up. So for any, you know, starting out marriages or whatever, that, that would be a big thing I would do is get in those habits now so that it's not difficult emotionally or mentally to readjust your lifestyle it's you know it just becomes a part of your lifestyle but Absolutely. yeah i like that one with uh with all that being said though guys if you like the video hit the hit the like button uh share leave a comment let us know what you're doing to prepare um subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video